Hello everybody, this is Matthias Müll for Marmoworld.com and welcome to this tutorial where I show you how to create isometric designs and in particular isometric grids in Adobe After Effects with the help of Grid Guide for After Effects. Isometric projection is a special way to draw 3D objects like in this example. And as you can see, the object fits perfectly to a special kind of grid and this is actually very different to normal perspective drawings of 3D objects. To get a better understanding of that, let's first take a look at how 3D objects look like when we create them with normal 3D layers in After Effects or any other normal 3D graphics software. In a normal 3D rendering, objects that are far away from the camera are drawn smaller than objects that are close to the camera which corresponds to our natural visual impression. In contrast to that, in isometric drawings, no matter where an object is located in the scene, it always has exactly the same size. Of course, this means that objects don't just have a different size, but also look different. The result is a less realistic, but somehow stylized and toy-like look that is often used in computer games and motion graphics. The workflow to create such isometric clips in After Effects is very different to normal 3D projects. Instead of using 3D layers and cameras, you create a 2D grid and then align all your shapes on this grid. Now, aligning or snapping to this grid turns actually out to be more complicated than you might think. The first issue is that snappable guides of After Effects can only be horizontal or vertical, but never diagonal lines. Luckily, with Grid Guide for After Effects, you can align layers also to rotated grids. But even this is not straightforward for isometric projects. One thing you need to keep in mind is that the layers you are working with are 2D layers, and for After Effects, all layers are actually rectangles. So this is what the layer actually looks like for After Effects. And if we align this layer to our grid lines, you can see that the result is actually correct, but it's not at all what we wanted. So aligning layers to the diagonal grid lines directly is not what we want. What we actually want to do is to create a grid of horizontal and vertical lines such that whenever the bounding box of the layer is aligned to this new grid, the content of the layer aligns perfectly with the original isometric grid. And since this helper grid now actually consists of horizontal and vertical lines, as an additional benefit we can use After Effects guidelines for this grid, such that we can interactively snap to it. Okay, this was the theory and now let's see how we can actually create these isometric grids and the helper grids in After Effects. So I have here an empty composition with just some background image and we start by opening our extension Grid Guide. So this is an extension for After Effects developed by Marmo World that you can get at ascripts.com and uh, now let's create grids. So Grid Guide can create different kinds of grids, single lines, bounded grids and infinite grids and we start by clicking creating an infinite grid that consists of actually only horizontal lines. So we click here and now this layer has some, this is a shape layer representing this grid and it has some grid parameters on its effect controls. Yeah? So you can cr control here for example the cell height. We keep this as at 100. If you want to have a different cell height you can enter it here. And it also of course as any layer has transform properties like rotation. And so what we actually want to do is we want to rotate this layer by 30 degrees. Now by default uh, you can see that at the center this grid has not necessarily aligned. So we are rotating now around a point where we have no line which makes things a bit tedious later. So before we rotate we want to ensure that this grid has a grid line at its center and an easy way to achieve this is to make sure that we set the anchor point to minus the 
ha minus the center. So the center point in my case is 960 by 540, and we set the anchor point to minus 960 by 540, minus 540. And now you can see we have a line always exactly in the middle, no matter what cell height we choose here. So we build up the entire structure from the center point, so to speak. Now we rotate this by 30 degrees and create a duplicate, control D, and rotate the duplicate by minus 30 degrees. Ah, and now we have our basic isometric grid. Usually you also want to complement this with vertical grid lines, so I create another one with only vertical grid lines. Again, I have to ensure that my anchor point is at minus the position minus 960 and minus 540. And now you can see you have these nice triangles that form our basic grids. So these vertical lines are not just part of the isometric, isometric grid, but also a part of our helper grid. Again, we wanted to have this helper grid consisting of vertical and horizontal lines that we can snap our layers to. Yeah. So how do we create the vertical lines? This is a little bit more uh, tedious. Of course, we start again with grid guide creating those grids. So make sure we have an horizontal enabled here, create our grid. And now you can see that this time the size does not fit to the sizes of the other ones. So first let's fix again the anchor point. Now you can see it's perfectly at the center. But now what you next want to do is to adjust the cell height here such that the lines perfectly fit here to the l to the points where the diagonal uh, lines are crossing. Yeah, this is an odd number, really. So it um, like if the other grids are have all a cell size of hundred here, you need something like. 58, 59, something around this. Luckily, you don't have to dial this in manually because this will never be 100% accurate. What you actually can use is a simple expression. So we reveal in the effect controls, in the grid parameters, grid parameters here, the cell height. We set it back to the default of 100. And now with the Alt key pressed, we click the stopwatch. So we Alt or Option click on stopwatch and enter here the following magic expression, which says, value divided by square root of 3. And square root of 3, you write in expressions as math.sqrt, square root, and then in parentheses you write 3. So this means mathematically take the original value and divide it by the square root of 3. You don't need to understand this, it's just you can see it dials in exactly the right value. And if you now later decide, well, I don't want to have such a grid, it should be a little bit wider, then you can reveal all those grids. Say here in this we want to have a cell height of 150. For example, in this grid we want to have a cell height of 150. And in the horizontal one we also want to have 150 or actually in the vertical one. And in this one, you can also simply just enter instead of 100, 150, and the calculation updates automatically, and you can see still everything fits nicely. Now we said we want these vertical and horizontal lines to be actually After Effects native guides. If we actually go here, click here, and say, show me the rulers, then you can drag out here some lines, guidelines, which are pretty nice because to those you can snap interactively. Yeah? To those lines that grid guide create, you cannot directly snap interactively. You can use those alignments buttons here, but you cannot directly snap to them. For interactive snapping, you need to have those guides, and you can create those with grid guide too. So we say here clear guides to get rid of this one guy again. And all you need to do is actually to click on convert grids to guides and it will for all the visible grids create those interactively snappable guidelines. Of course it won't do it for the diagonal lines because this is not supported by After Effects. So we don't need to bother about the diagonal lines, we just say convert grids to guides. This might take a while and After Effects needs to launch Photoshop in the background to do this because this is actually a pretty a uh, clever and tricky hack that allows us to uh, create those guides here. 
Uh, you can also see a little detail that in addition to this guidelines uh, it created for the grid, it also created guidelines uh, at the outlines of the composition. So if you don't like this, you can disable this behavior in the settings of grid guide where you can see say a line on composition outlines. If you disable this checkbox you also won't get those um, snappable guides uh, at the composition outlines. But I actually find it pretty useful usually so I keep them in place. So what does this mean for us now? We can use this now to start creating objects in our isometric perspective. So let's say we want to create a basic cube so I go here to my shape tool and I can click here to create the top of my cube like this. And whenever we were not, not right, so here in this corner I clicked really uh, too far away such that it didn't snap directly to it, so we can easily fix this. Yeah, we can check whether all points are where they should be located, and if not, they snap he here. I was at the, it snapped to the outline of the composition, and I can easily fix this. So it's really handy to have this interactive snapping here uh, enabled. Oh, also here I was not accurate, so looks like I should have worked with a little bit more zoomed, zoomed into this. Now sometimes you don't really want to use this snapping. Let me disable the rulers at the moment and, and the guides. Uh, sometimes instead you want to wor work with those alignment tools of grid guide. Yeah? So if we have now this object then it's pretty nice that with grid guide we can jump, we can click here to the right and it will jump in my grid one point, uh, one step to the right. And you can use this actually to jump here through the, through the grid step by step. Now, this is at the moment not working perfectly because let me try for example to go one step down and you can see that it rotates strangely now. Yeah? And this is because this time it decided that this diagonal line that you can see here is closer to the outline of, of this layer and so it aligned to this diagonal line which we want to avoid. So I say undo. So what we essentially need to tell grid guide is please don't align on the diagonal ones. Yeah? This is, let me actually check which one is which one. This is the horizontal. Let me quickly name it grid horizontal. This one here was uh, vertical and this here is the one diagonal and this is uh, diagonal two. So one thing that you can do if you want to tell grid guide please don't align on these diagonal lines is to simply turn them off. Yeah, and if we do this and now we go to our shape layer again and we say please align to the top. You can see it jumps perfectly here on, on the grid as we expected, but obviously usually you want it to be different. Yeah, usually you actually want to see those diagonal lines when you're working with them and you actually would even probably prefer to not see those. You want to see only the diagonal lines and snapping should not happen on the uh, diagonal ones but on the horizontal and vertical ones. And even this is something you can achieve. So by default grid guide aligns on all your visible grid lines, yeah? but if you don't want to do this, you can, if you say those, vi those should be visible, but I don't want grid guide to align on them, an easy trick is to say I precompose those. So I select both of those layers and say layer precompose. If you precompose several layers at once, by they always are precomposed such that all attributes are moved, moved into the new composition. If you just have a single grid that you want to precompose, also make sure to enable move all attributes into the new composition because otherwise the grid effect will stay in the main comp and so grid guide will still see it there. So always use this, move all attributes into the new composition and we call this here isometric grid. And you can see now the grid lines disappeared. Why did they disappear? Let me open the precomp. The reason is that you can see it on this green hashtag symbol here. They are by default set to be guide layers and guide layers are neither rendered nor visible in uh, nested compositions. So uh, when we use this as a precomp somewhere else. So we need to disable the guideline setting and now you can see the isometric grid is visible here but it's not used by grid guide anymore for the alignment. So now 
uh, it will align on all visible grids in this composition. And if there are no visible grids, it will use the invisible one ones, which is in this case the horizontal and the vertical one. So this is the behavior of grid guide. It aligns never on precomposed grids. It does not see them. Yeah. If you have any visible grids in your scene that are not precomposed, it will only align on the visible ones. If you have no visible ones, it will take a look at the invisible ones. Okay, that's a basic overview of how to work with isometric perspectives in After Effects, how to set up isometric grids in Grid Guide, how to get interactive snapping, and I hope this will make your work with isometric projects much easier. Okay, that's it for now. Again, I'm Matthias Müll from marmoworld.com and I'm looking forward to see you in the next tutorial.